In the last few videos we got to know an essential tool, Wireshark. Now before we dive into a specific layer, we should have another tool at our aid, standards. Let's consider a world without standards. There are many different network vendors and suppliers, for example Cisco, Dell or D-Link. They all manufacture different devices, such as routers and switches that we'll learn more about later. Each vendor and supplier has its own ideas of how things should be done. What would happen in a world without standards then? Perhaps each vendor will use its own methods and develop devices and protocols according to its beliefs. What is the problem with such a model? Well, first, devices created by different vendors will not be able to communicate with one another. That way, if I bought a router from vendor A and my friend bought a router from vendor B, we cannot communicate. Obviously, that scenario is inconceivable. Furthermore, consumers will be stuck with a single vendor. That is, if I've purchased a router from vendor A, I cannot buy another router from vendor B and have them work together. In order to solve these issues, network vendors work by network standards. Good standards adopted by all vendors allow computers to communicate across different vendors and allow the consumers to purchase devices from various vendors without problems. There are many different standard organizations and we'll get to know a few along this course. For now, I'd like to introduce you to one crucial source, RFCs. RFCs, or Request for Comments, are technical papers stored online and numbered in chronological order of creation. Let's see an example together, RFC number 791, that describes IP, the Internet Protocol. We will cover this protocol in depth later, but it will serve as a good example for now. When we look at an RFC, we usually see a very long technical paper. Hence, we probably don't want to read through it unless we're looking for a good night read before going to sleep. In most cases, we'd use an RFC with a specific question in mind. For example, let's say we are wondering where the version of the IP packet is. We'll look for version and shortly find that the IP header actually starts with it. We can also see a diagram, helping us understand how the IP packet is constructed. We can also see that the version field is 4 bits long. We can also see in Wireshark that an IP packet begins with a version field. We will refer to RFCs many times during the course and they are a crucial tool in our toolset. In the next video we'll start to get an in-depth view into this second layer.